Hi, Vincent Hall, and welcome to another edition of the photography class. I hope you've all had a good week. I've been asked to review some of the basic principles, elements, rules, whatever you might like to call them, of composition. When an artist dealing with painting or drawing starts their work, they have a blank canvas or a tabula rasa, however you want to call it. They're starting from nothing and building onto it. As photographers, we're not given such a luxury. We have to deal with the hand we're dealt, where we are, the lighting we're in, and we can control some of that as we've seen in the past. But how do you start to get the photo looking good from the beginning? What do you look for? I'm gonna show you all of those, and then a sample of how you can get started practicing it with a technique called flat lay photography. And it's just as the name implies, we're gonna be taking pictures of things lying flat on a surface, looking directly overhead, and hopefully not getting our feet in the shot in the process. Let's get started. We've already dealt with the rule of thirds, which is pretty much the gold standard for just how to frame whatever it is you're trying to take a picture of. There are things you can look for when you're trying to capture a moment that might give you a better sense of where do I look through my camera? Where do I hold my phone? whatever you're using to capture that image, there are a couple of key things that we can all look for regardless of our subject matter. Because every single one of these elements I'm about to show you on my computer can be found in pretty much any situation. Let's start with the basic premise of the point. The point is the smallest singular object in any composition of artwork. It's where everything starts, originates, and also leads your eye to. If we look at this picture of the sand dunes, I'm pretty sure your eye goes directly to one point, and that would be here, the peak of this top sand dune. A point gives your eye a reference of what's important and where to look. You can find points in anything from signage to branches on trees to someone's nose to actually them pointing with their hands. So a point is a good element of composition to look for. The next thing would be the line. Almost everything has lines. Somehow they're implied, somehow they're obvious. This is a line right here coming on a strong diagonal through the middle of this picture in another sand dune photo. It also creates a secondary fat line or shadow right underneath it. And then there's all these other minimal lines that were barely visible, but they give us a direction. Lines lead the viewer's eye around the photo. Case in point, if we start here, this line comes up here, there's a little shadow, leads our eye right down this big line, this bounces around, comes around here, and pretty much we keep looping around into the middle. Finding lines are interesting. You can use them in bricks, the lines in the mortar, it could be the lines in a fence, whatever it might be that implies where the viewer should look. That's why lines are important. Then we have shapes. Shapes are my favorite, the shapes and balance, and we'll get to balance in a minute. But shapes are so cool because they give you a chance to really express an individuality in your image. Now this one reminds me of one of our first assignments, looking up. And it is a looking up assignment, but the shapes are amazing. We've got all of these arched windows, we've got repetition, you've got color, you really got all the elements of a good photo in this negative space by virtue of the blue sky. But we also have a lot of shapes, a lot of squares, rectangles, arches, triangles, you name it, it's pretty much in here. So yes, this photo does cover a lot of the basic elements of good composition, but what makes this a perfect composition as opposed to just okay, is this piece of the building in this negative space. All of these little areas here, and I hope you can see my pointer, everything's leading to a directly centered photo, which is pretty much everything we don't want. This would look like a picture frame if this building wasn't here. But by having this little piece of this tower jutting into our negative space of the sky, it somehow becomes interesting. It has somewhere else for the viewer's eye to go besides woo right into the negative space of the sky. So when you're looking for shapes, look for visual rest, 
that's what this is, the sky, it's negative space, and look for something outside of the obvious that's going to bring the viewer's eye into picture. So if we go to our rule of thirds right here, we can see this object intersects with one of our rule of third lines, and that's exactly where you want something to be. Yes, it's almost exactly centered, and that's not normally what we want, but having this object makes it work. So don't be afraid to use centered objects as long as you have something else that can throw it off. Texture is so much fun, and I love this one. And a lot of you may have travel photography that you might even want to just turn to black and white so that it emphasizes the texture rather than the subject matter. But this is an object, this is ice on a glacier, but it's all about showing the clouds back here behind all this mountain glacial, glacial stuff and all of the snow and the texture on that. But it is some line, but it's really more the texture. This just exudes a lot of texture. What makes this photo work is this area. There's some texture. It's almost a reverse of this white with these little dark shapes. This is all dark with even darker shapes, but this helps draw our eye in. It creates an interesting area of visual rest. Visual rest is where the eye gets a chance to breathe, not that it really does, but for lack of a better term, and then look back into the composition. If I crop this, so that it was only something like this. Let's see if we can get a little spot here. And we'll go down here. There we go. That's really not that interesting. I mean, maybe a little bit here, but there's no visual rest. It's all one and the same. So you don't want that. What you want is this, where we can have everything pretty much defined by shape, tone, shadow, all those things, but it allows us to see the texture. Color or lack of color. Everybody thinks of color as big bursts of beautiful flowers and that can be a gorgeous photo, but look at this one. This is amazing. It's sunset. Um, it's just the sun catching the very top peaks of these mountains and everything else is in the shaded blue as the sun goes down and you get these blue tones. What a wonderful balance of warm and cool colors. This really is colorful without it just being saturated color. Tone. Tone is where the photograph has a balance of all the blacks and whites and grays. Or if this was in color, you would see a balance of lights, mediums, and darks of every color in the photo. Ansel Adams was a master at capturing tone. And you can see in this picture, we have every element of the grayscale from super dark blacks under shadows here to the whitest whites, the highlights on the waterfall, and then all the middle values of gray. So having a good tone is good for your photograph as well. And using the tone to make a good composition. So again, what makes this composition work? The waterfall is captured in the intersection of your rule of third points. It's not directly in the center. And this leads your eye around the picture. How does it lead your eye around the picture? Well, we're naturally going to follow these lines down. But once the water hits the bottom, it fans out. So either way, let's say my eye goes to the left. Oops, I hit a rock. This rock is angled. Now my eye's going up here. Oh, what happens here? This shadow or negative space brings us back in. I might follow this tree up and the branch comes around here and look where we are again, back at the waterfall. It keeps your eye engaged. If I go to the right, oh, I ran into the tree. <laughs> and I can go either down, around where these things are, follow the water, I hit the rock and I'm going right back up this pattern or I'm going to follow this trajectory and go up the tree trunk and you might think well that just leads us off the page and it does except the tone of the tree trunk is the same as the tone of this rock so I can just as easily come this way right off this edge and I'm right back in the waterfall so they've used techniques here this is framing 
where this tree trunk is actually framing the area around the waterfall, as are the rocks. And they've used the patterns and the tone to make your eye stay in the photo. That's what makes a good composition, when your eye wants to stay in the photo. Here's one of my favorites, balance. Balance doesn't mean right in the middle, like we're balanced on top of something, but look at the balance of this. To me, this epitomizes what we're looking for in a composition or a good composition. What do we have here? We've got a point. I goes right to this top mountain. So we have one element there. We've got line. We've got lines here. We've got lines formed around the perimeter of the water source. We've got lines around the edge of the mountain range. So we've got that. We've got negative space, which is the sky. We've got pattern or texture, which is in all of the little rock formations here in the mountain, as well as the greenery and the shrubs that grow down here on the bottom. But how this works is balance. And what makes this photograph to me stunning is the reflection of the sky in the water source that bounces back up here and unifies the picture. So balance is all about unifying your photo. You have enough of this color orange here, but it shows up again down here. You've got green on the bottom, but you've got green in here as well. We've got blues and pinks in the sky. We've got blues and pinks in the water reflected. Everything you see here, you can find here. Everything you see on the left, you can find on the right. The shapes you see on the top, you can find them again implied on the bottom. So that's what balance is. It's looking for a way to integrate what's on top with what's on the bottom, what's on the left with what's on the right. It doesn't mean centered like a bullseye, but it does mean that your photograph is balanced. Negative space, we've talked about with the rule of thirds, but it can work. Your eye goes right to this bird. This bird becomes your point. A point doesn't have to be a literal dot. It's just the point of focus, and the focus is on this bird. Everything leads to it. It's also the only thing in sharp focus. So that helps make this an eye-pleasing composition, even though for the most part, it's just negative space. Pattern. Pattern is something you can look for a lot of times in nature, but you can find it indoors as well too. It could be the arrangement of furniture. It could be vertical lines in cabinetry or maybe glasses hanging on a shelf or whatever you might find. But these birch trees, and the fact that they're white against all the colorful background give a beautiful sense of pattern and line. Actually, they're aspen trees. I apologize. <laughs> but it's just a beautiful repetition, which is what pattern is all about. There was an old adage in my photo classes in grad school that was, if you do something often enough, make people believe you meant to do it, it'll work for you. So if you have enough of these things, it looks like it's meant to happen and it works as a photo. The other reason this works is there's balance. This tree's bark balances this one. There's interesting distance and negative space. If these trees were all lined up in a row, it wouldn't work. But look at the diagonal these tree trunks create with the tops of these little um, evergreen trees down here on the bottom. It creates that diagonal that keeps your eye going around and around the picture. It creates a triangle in a way. We go down, up, and follow right back down again to this color. That golden triangle that Leonardo da Vinci decided, and rightly so, was the essence of a masterpiece in composition for a painting can also work in photography. So how's that all work? I found this photo. And I find it intriguing on in so many ways. And a lot of you sent with your military background might enjoy this photo as well. How cool is this photo? We have got negative space. We've got the perfect idea of a point, which is right of this gentleman on the top. We've got line. We've got shadow. We've got texture, the way the sun gleams off the water. We've got exquisite balance. 
What you see here in the dark areas of this part of the ship is reflected in the shadow of the water, the planes on board, the lines that reach up from the middle, use of uneven numbers of things. We've got three lines, we've got one person. It all works together. Yeah, this is blown out in photography, this white, but that's what makes it beautiful. And the last part is, in a good composition, you always want more room wherever the object is headed. Here's the direction that this ship is going. It's headed this way. If we have this picture and we took it like this, oh, it's not nearly as strong of a picture because now the ship is trapped. We don't get the essence of the size. We don't get negative space. We don't get visual rest. So always, if nothing else, if you have someone running down the street or they're driving a car, they're walking their dog, whatever direction they're headed, always give more space to the direction they're headed than the direction that they just left. That's a key to good photography, composition, and some of the basics. To start a flat lay photo, all you need are a surface that's blank or a plain color. I picked this neutral greenish gray piece of paper. You could use white, black, whatever, and a light source. So I'm using my front door. You could choose a window. Now, if you don't want to lie things flat down on the floor, you can use a low surface like a coffee table or perhaps some kind of a box just to lay everything on. The key is we want a neutral surface to put our objects on. So I've selected some rocks, not too exciting, and they're just smack dab in the middle of this surface. But I'm gonna show you how we can make this a little more interesting by rearranging some things. First, I'm going to add a second surface, which is a blank sheet of canvas. And we're going to use this to reposition these rocks so that we can make an eye-pleasing composition. So you can see now I have my elements for my flat lay. I've got these rocks and I've arranged them by size and I've got my piece of canvas and I've got my neutral background and my light source. So what I'm going to do now is play around with how to get these rocks arranged on this canvas and this background as an essence of how to create a good photo, pretending that all of these objects might be things you would have outside. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure we have an odd number and I have 13 rocks. Then what I'm going to do is arrange these rocks and I'll get back to you with my finished example um, into a pattern so that they work with the canvas and the background and I will tell you why they work. Okay, so I have positioned my rocks where I kind of like them. I've got a point as is evidenced by my little point rock here. I've got pattern, I even put one rock on top of the other to kind of combine elements. I've got lights, darks, all points in between, and a whole lot of negative space. So what can I do with that space? And where am I going with this story anyway? Because usually flat lays will tell a story. Well, I'm going to add a picture of my daughters when they were younger. And I can put that picture in here, and now it's like, well, okay. Do these kids collect rocks? Um, do they go somewhere? What's that story? And compositionally, my middle daughter's legs are going right off the page, so that probably won't work. What we can do, though, is move our way of thinking around to come to this direction. So don't be afraid in a good composition to move your camera. So now we've got the girls, move them over, bring them down, the rocks, and still a negative space. Now, where was this anyway? This was in Eaton Center, New Hampshire, and I happen to have a mug from where we were staying. So now I've created a flat lay that tells the entire story. It gives a sense of place, it gives the people involved, and the rocks were from the beach that they had here at this place called Crystal Lake, one of my daughter's favorite places to go. What I would do with this photo is crop it to get rid of my floor, but you can see how a flat lay works to give you the elements of good composition. Something as simple as coins in a jar could make an interesting flat lay, 
and help you practice with the elements of good composition. In this case, we've got rule of thirds, we've got direction, the way the coins are spilling out from the jar, and I use the jar lid to give an end point so that we keep our eyes surrounded by those coins. I can move this around a little bit, maybe go on an angle, maybe take the picture more from this way. So when you're doing a flat lay, oh, I really like that. You can change your angle a little bit. Everything's still lying flat, but we're just not quite overhead. However, it's still a good exercise to get basic composition. And we've got almost all of those elements here. My last example of a flat lay is just a Tupperware container of old costume jewelry. Everybody has collections of stuff. It might be old photos, it could be books, uh, it could be albums, it could be th music, sheets of music, whatever you might have. So I have this little collection of costume jewelry and on the surface, that's not much of anything for a photo. But if we move this over and I'm just bringing in a white plate, something that reflects light, and I randomly just dump some of this out. Sometimes serendipity is the better point. And then we can play around a little bit with getting, using these fake pearls to create an outline. I've got a pretty interesting photo here of lots of different colors. You don't have to include the entire scene in a flat lay. If I back up a little bit, you can see there's too much of that plate. But if I come into here, now I've got half the circle. I've got repetition of circles with these pearls and a bunch of jumbled stuff that just creates texture because texture is also one of the key rules of good composition and something you can play around with using a flat lay. Lastly, you don't have to use just a piece of paper. You could use a box. I found a plain black box that almost creates a shadow box effect for the rest of my flat lay unit, my last one here, which I thought these were interesting. I found an old watch, uh, a heart that happened to be my grandmother's birthstone, a couple of political buttons from two different persuasions. One is faded, says Roosevelt Wallace, and the other is Nixon Agnew. And then um, the victory with the American flag pin that I'm not sure whose any of these belong to except that Nixon Agnew button I got because they came to our school to talk to us about politics and that's where I got my button. Anyway, um, I arranged these in a simple pattern. I'm using the watch completely vertical so that it kind of blocks off the rest of that shadow and then using the repetition of shapes, the two circles, the heart and everything to kind of lead you around but a lot of negative space as well. So any old collection can also work and you can play around with it to make the best composition possible. Don't be afraid to try multiple angles of the same objects. I hope that gave you some ideas on how you can practice the essence of a good composed photograph. You might try using things you have around the house or go out on a walk and look through the lens. That's the key. If you compose the photo in your camera, your cell phone, whatever you're taking your pictures with, you'll have a better chance of a successful image than trying to crop it down later in Photoshop. Yes, we can do all of those things, but look for the elements we just discussed wherever you might be or practice at home using the flat lay photography example that I just showed you. There'll be more flat lay photographs to follow along with the images that we saw for the basic elements of good photography composition. So look for point, shape, line, pattern, repetition, um, tone, balance, and texture. All of those things help give you a good composition. You don't want to have elements of objects in your photo that are just centered in all one lump. You wanna have some balance between positive and negative space. And always, always, wherever someone's looking, have a little more room between where they are looking rather than where they've been. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of photography. If you're celebrating Father's Day, I hope you enjoy that holiday as well this coming weekend. Till then, stay safe, be well, and I'll see you all next week with another photography lesson.